Hello everybody, welcome to our fourth week of Good News Club. I hope you're enjoying the different things that we're doing. This week I wanted to start off by showing you something very, very special to me. And this is my kitty cat. Her name is Scout. She is two years old and most of the time I don't call her Scout, I call her Meow Meow most of the time. But she's my kitty cat and I thought you would like to see her. We'll be doing some songs, a Bible lesson, a memory verse, and some other things too, like we usually do. So let's go ahead and get started today. Jesus is the good news and he can be your friend. If you have a friend, it would be nice, it's a nice thing to say thank you to your friend if they do something for you. If Jesus and God is your friend, you should say thank you to them. You can say thank you God for life. God gave you life, you should tell him thank you for it. But there's a lot of other things you can tell God thank you for as well. Let's see, what else could we thank God for? What about that? We could say thank you God for the Bible and thank you God for prayer, that we can talk to you about anything. Even if we have worries or if we're scared about something, we can pray and tell God about that. Thank you God for church. Some churches aren't meeting right now because of different restrictions the government has put. But church is a place where you can learn and meet other people who believe in Jesus and you can encourage each other. Even when you don't go to the church building, you can still encourage each other. What about Christ? Christ, Jesus Christ, he died for you. He came alive again. He did that for your sin. You should tell him thank you. Also, heaven, ah. Heaven, the wonderful place that God has created for those who believe in him. Heaven will be a beautiful, wonderful place. We can tell God thank you for that. We can tell God thank you for the missionaries who are here and in other countries too. We can tell God thank you for our clothes. Could you imagine if we didn't have clothes? I don't want to imagine that. We can tell God thank you for our clothes. We can tell God thank you for school. I know your school is a little bit different right now and you're having to get these learning packages or do it online so things are different 
but you can tell God, thank you for my teachers and thank you that we can still be learning things. What about your friends? Thank you, God, for my friends that you've given me people that I can talk to and play with. Some people don't have enough money for food. So when you have food, tell God thank you for it. He has provided for you. Your health as well. Tell God thank you for your health. Not everyone is doing well these days. Some people are sick with cancer. Some people have coronavirus. Other people have diabetes and things like that. So if you have good health, tell God thank you for good health. We have two more. This one, thank you for my home. Thank you, God, for a safe place for me, for my family as well. And the last one, thank you, God, for the sun and the rain. Could you imagine if there was no sun and rain? How would the plants grow? And how would the farmers have a job? Tell God thank you for the sun and the rain. All of these things we can tell God thank you for. If you want, you could take a few minutes, pause the video, and pick maybe a few, maybe three of these and tell God thank you for it. We're going to do that right now. So let's pick three. Which three should I pick? Let me pick the sun and the rain. I will also pick thank you God for heaven, that wonderful place that we'll be in someday if we believe in Jesus. And thank you God for my friends. We'll tell God thank you for those three things. Friends, sun and rain, and heaven. So we're going to pray. And when we pray, we like to close our eyes so we're not distracted. And we also like to fold our hands so that we're not playing with other things or messing around while we're praying. So let's do that. Let's pray and tell God thank you for our friends, the sun and rain, and for heaven. And if you want to pause the video and pray after I'm done, then you can do that. And God would love to hear you say thank you to him. So let's close our eyes and pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this day and for this online Good News Club that you're letting me do. Thank you for the sun and the rain. Thank you for our friends. And thank you for heaven. Thank you for that wonderful place that you've made for us that we'll get to go to someday to live with you. Thank you, God, for everyone who is here and who is watching this video. I thank you, God, that I can do this and please help us to learn a lot today from your word and from you in jesus name amen we're going to have our god wants to spend time with just you and then we'll go right into our mission story with wilfredo
and welcome back to our online club and we are continuing with our online mission so last week we ended in chapter three and now we are continuing to chapter four so late one night gladys rode into luster village a headquarter for food binding and the sale of little girls gladys was very determined of catching the man who was running the business of selling children so she immediately sent her soldiers to knock on doors gladys went to to a house and god guided her to knock at a house where no light was no light shown she said my god told me you are one of the ring leaders she said to the frightened woman who was peeping through the crack of the house she said gladys said let me in to see the girls here or i will climb the window gladys pushed the door past the door she pushed the door past the woman in the front room mrs ching was the one who was in the room she ran out and carried a young girl whose feet were bandaged. Sobbing with pain, the little the little child said her name. I am Tiger Lily. And as well, Gladys took her, Gladys took her and unwrapped her broken hot little feet and washed them. Please help the other girls, the child whimpered. Mrs. Ching hide them in the back room. Mrs. Ching was ordered to to bring the the four children the four other children gladded on bone their feet, washed them, and sang about Jesus. So she, she um, gladded get the five little children and tell them about Jesus, sang about Jesus, tell them of what God wants to do in their life, as well as what God wants to do in your life if you accept Jesus in your heart. And before, before long, she was awake, Gladys was awake by a sound of bitter weeping. Mrs. Ching was wailing and ring, wringing her hands. And she said, my master will kill me for letting you in. So he bought me, Miss Ching said, he bought me in the marketplace like you buy a mule. Gladys told her about the one and true God who would like not even buy her, but get her for free and set her heart free. So Mrs. Ching could not believe such good news. In the morning, Gladys walked the girls and down. You will, and she said, you will all come and live with me in the inn, as well Mrs. Ching will come too. Back home in Yancheng, after the children were asleep, all the Mullers had their Bible story. Mrs. Mrs. Ching came to Gladys. Are you sending me in prison in the morning? Not this, no, no, say, no, said Gladys. This is your new home now. What, said Mrs. Ching, after I was so rude to you, and so weak to the little girls, I refuse your God. Mrs. Ching knew she was a sinner. She asked, does he still want me or still love me? Gladys answered, yes, he loves you. He gave his own perfect son to die in place of you. But Jesus died and rose the third day and now lives in heaven preparing a home for you, said Gladys. Mrs. Ching received the Lord Jesus as her Savior that night. From then on, she told Ah, the own other woman, I bound up feet of little girls, and my own heart was bound up tight with sin. Now I am saved, and my heart is set free. Mrs. Ching accepted that night Jesus. Mrs. Ching did not understand how God could still love her after all the sinful things she had done. Now come back week five to listen to our to our chapter five next. Let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. Stop and let me tell you. Tell the story of 
question for you. What do you know about sheep? You like my little sheep here? It's part of our Christmas decorations. But sheep? Well, we know that the shepherd takes care of the sheep. But what do you call it if the shepherd is taking all the sheep to a certain place, maybe a field where they're going to eat grass, but then one of the sheep goes way over there, away from the shepherd. What do you call that? That's called going astray. The shepherd is trying to guide the sheep, but the sheep went astray. It went away from the shepherd. Did you know that you and I are like sheep? Sometimes we go astray. We go away from the safety. Our memory verse today talks about that. Our memory verse is found in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. Isaiah is in the Old Testament, the first part of the Bible, the first big section. It's found in chapter 53, and then it's verse number 6. And I have it here on this card for you to see. And it says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 6. Now this verse is telling us all we like sheep have gone astray. You see, you and me are like sheep because sometimes when God says to do something, we don't do it. We go astray. God is trying to show us the right way to go. But we don't want to do it and we go our own way. We sin. We go against God. You and I are like sheep that have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. So you and I, we have that problem of sin. We're born with it. No one had to teach you. And when you sin, you go your own way. You go astray from God. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Lord God, God the Father, he has put your sin on Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, he died for your sin. Your sin was placed on him. It was like God putting your punishment for sin on his son, Jesus. Jesus took the punishment for your sin and for my sin too. And iniquity is another word that means sin. The iniquity of us all, of you and me, of everybody, all the people of the world, everyone's sin was placed on Jesus when he died. Your sin, my sin, Jesus died for it all. If you have believed on Jesus, then you should say thank you to God for Jesus dying for your sin. He didn't have to do it. He did it because he loves you. He wanted to do it so you can have a way to be with him in heaven someday, to be forgiven of your sin. But if you have never believed in Jesus before, you are still going astray like that sheep. But you don't have to keep going that way. You can ask Jesus to forgive your sin. You can call on Jesus to save you from your sin. I don't mean calling on the phone. I mean calling as in asking Jesus to save you from your sin. You can do that today. We'll be talking more about that later on. You and me, we don't have to be like sheep that go astray. We can go God's way. Let's read our verse together. Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 6. We have a song with our memory verse on it for this week, just like we had last week. Got a new one for this week. So I hope you enjoy the Isaiah 53, 6 memory verse song. Sheep have gone astray. He have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all.
remember from last week? We learned that Pilate, the governor, had sent Jesus to be crucified. Oh, the Jewish leaders were so pleased that this had happened. It must have been so sad for Jesus' disciples to be watching this happen. But the order was given. Oh, the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders, they were so happy and so pleased. They wanted this to happen. Well, they put a cross beam on Jesus. And they had Jesus carry this cross. But Jesus was so beaten and so weak and so tired that he actually collapsed. He collapsed when he was carrying this cross. And they took a man from the side of the road who was watching. And the man's name was Simon. He came from a place called Cyrene. And they told Simon, carry the cross for Jesus. Jesus was so weak, so bruised, so beaten because they had already been beating him even before he died on the cross. A crown of thorns was on Jesus' head. And as they took him to the place where he would be nailed to the cross, Jesus went and they took him to that place. And you might not like this next picture, but I'll show it to you. Because it is a tr true thing, a real thing that happened. They laid Jesus down. They put the cross on the ground. They put Jesus on top of the cross. And they nailed him to the cross. Oh, this was a terrible, terrible punishment. This was not easy at all. It was a horrible thing to go through, a horrible type of death. Beside Jesus, there were two other men, one on the right hand and one on the left hand side. And they were killed as well, or crucified to be killed on the crosses as well. But those men, they had done wrong things. They deserved to die for their sin. The Bible says that you and I have sin as well. Each one of us, you and me, we have sin. And the Bible talks about your sin. It says that you and I are sinners. Remember our verse? Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to our own way. When you go your own way instead of God's way, you sin. It's things like when your mom tells you to do something and you pretend not to hear. That's sin. That's like disobeying your mom in a way. Or when you're, you know you're supposed to be kind, and instead you're rude, that's sin as well. And you would fail to be perfect if you think, oh, I could be perfect. You'll soon find out you can't, because you're born with a problem of sin, and God hates that sin, because it keeps you away from Him. He wants to be your friend, but your sin keeps Him away. You deserve to be punished for your sin. Sin is a terrible thing. And the two other criminals on each side of Jesus were punished for their sin. Well, Jesus and the two criminals, they were put to death on the crosses. And it was not easy. It was a very painful thing to happen. But right behind Jesus when he died on the cross, look at what those soldiers are doing. Right back here. Look at what they're doing. They took Jesus' clothes and here they are casting lots for it. They are gambling for his clothes. <sighs> Jesus knew that was going on. As the people looked at Jesus, they were mocking him. They were teasing him. They were telling him, if you're the son of God, come down from the cross yourself. Save yourself. Jesus knew what was going on. It must have been very, very painful for him. Actually, let me show you a little bit something here. You see these ropes on both of his hands? Those ropes, actually, when Jesus died on the cross, they were not there. They put them in the picture, but those ropes were not there. Actually, one time I was in a Bible class and my teacher, he told me something very, very interesting. And I've told some people before, so you might know, but... I'll tell you, just so that everybody knows. When Jesus died, they put the nail in between the two bones in the arm. There's two bones that go right into your wrist here, and 
there's like a little space in between them. And they put the nail in between those. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he had to push himself up so he could breathe and then down when he would exhale, when he would breathe out. So it became harder and harder for Jesus to push himself up to breathe, to get each new breath of air was very difficult for him. Crucifixion was a horrible, painful way to die. The soldiers, they mocked Jesus, they teased him. It was very, very rude, very mean. But Jesus went through that because he loves you. He did not save himself. He went through it because he loves you and me so very much. He could have saved himself. He could have even had angels come and save him, but he did not. He wanted to forgive your sin because he loves you. He loves you more than anyone ever could. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 8, that God is love. He loves you so much, even in spite of your sin. He loves you, he created you. He knows you, everything about you, even things that you might not know about yourself. God knows that too. And he loves you even though you have sinned. And even though these people were teasing him and mocking him and just making fun of him and telling him, well, if you're God the Son, come down from the cross yourself and then we'll believe you. Jesus did not come down from the cross. He stayed on that cross. He died for your sin and mine. He gave his blood. He gave his life for your sin. It was not easy. It was hard, 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 hard. It was very difficult. As they mocked him, Jesus, he asked Father God to forgive them. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He was asking God, his father, to forgive the people of their sin right above Jesus' head. See that sign? They put a sign. And the sign said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. They put that right above Jesus. Some people were in front of Jesus and they were teasing him and calling out at him and making fun of him. But other people, especially some of the women who were there, who had cared for Jesus and followed him, they were crying. They were so sad. They were greatly upset. Even a few of Jesus' disciples were there, especially John. He was one of the disciples, and he was watching this happen, and he was very sad too. Could you imagine seeing like one of your very best friends being killed? Oh, it was so very difficult. But Jesus, he went through that because he loves you so much. Even the two other criminals that were right beside Jesus, they teased him too. They made fun of him and they were saying rude things to him. But one of them stopped and one of them said, hey, don't talk to Jesus that way. This man, don't talk to him. He doesn't deserve to die. The criminal was saying, hey, you and I, we deserve to die for our sin. We've done bad things. We deserve to be on this cross. But Jesus here, uh-uh, he doesn't deserve to die. He's perfect. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you go into your kingdom or when you go to paradise, to heaven, remember me. Wow. And Jesus did. Jesus did remember him. In fact, Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. He was giving this man a place in heaven. Jesus forgave this man's sin. The man must have been so happy, so thankful. And if you have believed in Jesus, you can be thankful that God has forgiven your sin as well. In fact, you should always be thankful that Jesus has forgiven you. And thank God that Jesus willingly took the punishment for your sin. He did it. He didn't have to, but he did because he loves you. If Jesus never died for you, just imagine. You would still be separated from God. And you would still have this terrible problem of your sin punishment. But Jesus died for your sin. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9.15, Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. We can't describe how great it is. 
that Jesus died for our sin. It's something so wonderful that words can't even describe it. God's gift of Jesus is so wonderful, there aren't words to describe it. And the other criminal who just got his sin forgiven, he must have been so thankful. Even though he was dying on the cross, he must have been so happy that Jesus had forgiven his sin. He must have been so very thankful for that. Well, Jesus, it was very hard. In fact, for three hours, there was darkness over all the land. Darkness like night. Dark, dark, black, dark. Very, just pitch dark. For three hours, from 12 o'clock noon until three in the afternoon, darkness was over the land. And Jesus, he hung there on that cross and he cried out to his father God. God had left Jesus. The Bible says that your sins, sins were placed on Jesus. Jesus became sin for you and for me. And when Jesus became sin, God had to leave him. Do you know why? Because God cannot be where sin is. God is holy. And Jesus, he cried and he said, my God, why have you forsaken me? But then Jesus, he cried out and he said, it is finished. And when he did that, he said, into your hands, into God's hands, I commit my spirit. And he breathed his final breath and he died. Jesus died. He gave his life. He took the punishment for your sin. He died on the cross. He was not forced to. But he did because he loves you. He died for your sin and for my sin. Your sin can be forgiven because of Jesus. He paid for it by dying on the cross. It says here, the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Jesus' blood. When Adam and Eve first sinned, the very first people, when they disobeyed God, God said that sin can only be forgiven or removed or forgiven by the giving of blood. Jesus gave his blood for your sin. He took the punishment that God said you have to do. Jesus' precious blood was the payment that God required. And remember in our verse, the last part says, And the Lord, the Lord God, has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The iniquity is sin. Jesus died for your sin. He made the way for you to live with him forever in heaven someday. He was buried, but on the third day he came alive. And alive in heaven, today he proved that the payment for sin, it's complete. It's all taken. He died for your sin. He took the complete punishment for your sin. He did that by dying on the cross and rising again. He died on the cross and when he died, a soldier came up and took a spear and put it right in the side of the ribs of Jesus' body and out came blood and water and that showed that Jesus had died. They took Jesus down off the cross. Some of the soldiers were standing nearby and they said, truly, this man is the son of God. Some of them believe, you know, when Jesus died, it, it just wasn't just like he died. No, there was other things. Remember, there's darkness, right? But when he died, there was an earthquake. The rocks split. Could you imagine that? Rocks splitting? Wow. That would have been kind of scary to be there. Even in the Bible, it says here, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were open. And some of the men... The centurions and those who were with him, they kept watch over Jesus. They said, when they saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe or wonder. And they said, truly, this was the Son of God. Wow, when Jesus died, there was a special curtain and the curtain was torn all the way in two. That curtain was in the temple where people would go to worship God. But behind that curtain, was where the priest would go to give a sacrifice to God. 
And the priest would go and there once a year to meet with God. And other people, they could not go to that part of the temple. But when Jesus died, that curtain, it was torn in two. And it was kind of a way of saying, Jesus took the punishment for your sin. You can go directly to God now. You can have your sin forgiven too. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing. Jesus, he died and he took the complete punishment for your sin. They took Jesus down off the cross and a man named Joseph went to Pilate. And this is not Joseph that we talk about Mary and Joseph. This is not that Joseph. This is a different Joseph. He came to Pilate and he said, hey, I have a little tomb and Jesus can be buried there. So Pilate, he allowed Jesus' body to be taken to Joseph's tomb. And we call this man Joseph of Arimathea because he is from the place called Arimathea. So we call him Joseph of Arimathea. And they put Jesus' body in that tomb. And some of the religious leaders, they went to Pilate and they said, Jesus said he would rise again after three days. We need to put some soldiers to, to make sure nobody come and steal his body. Because if they steal his body, then they might go around and try to spread lies that Jesus has risen again. So make sure you have soldiers there to make sure nobody come and mess up anything. So Pilate, he agreed and soldiers were sent to be right in front of the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid. Jesus had died. He died, do you know why? Because of sin. He took the punishment for your sin. You realize that? He died for your sin. He took the punishment. And the Bible says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. To call, well, I don't mean on the phone. I mean it here as to tell Jesus you are putting your trust in him as the only one who can forgive you. And when you call on Jesus, he promises you will be saved. God promises you will be saved from your sin's punishment. Your sin will be forgiven and you will be changed on the inside to please God. If you would like to call on Jesus to save you from your sin, you can pray and tell him something like this. Dear God, I know I have sinned. Please forgive my sin. I believe in you that you died and came alive. Help me to live your way with your help. Amen. If you tell Jesus that and you truly mean it, he promises to save you. If you want me to help you with that, you can send me a message here on the Facebook page and I'd love to help you to make that decision. It's a very important and serious thing to do is to call on Jesus for you to be saved from your sin. Well, I hope you enjoyed our time this week. I did too. And I hope you come back next week to enjoy more. Bye.